Hello, Pawb. Um, Emma and we um, doing Gwaith and Can Go Blaen y Gwent um, as the professional lead for engagement equality in Welsh. Uh, and just to say, um, Diolch uh, Sean uh, Eva for the um, Gwahoddiad heddiw today. Um, so yeah, um, we are going to, I'm going to be touching on a few things today. So we'll just get my slides. Just memorize that. Yeah, so I'm going to be talking about a little bit about you know, blind went as an area, talking us through um, how we're looking to enable change um, following our investigation, thinking about how we bring um, all our work together and joining up the dots, um, talk a little bit about some of the positive steps, whether they're small or big, and also just um, just want to touch on at the end, you know, how we're looking um, sort of to sort of the progress that we've already made in terms of improving our Welsh language services. So just a little bit um, about Blaen y Gwent. Um, so in terms of the census data, um, so in the 2021 census identified that there are 4,035 Welsh speakers living in Blaen y Gwent, um, which equates to around 6.2 of the population. So we've got fairly low populations of Welsh language speakers. And then in terms of as an organisation, so in terms of our um, speaking Welsh language speaking ability across the workforce, um, we've got a total of 2,464 staff and 1.8% are fluent Welsh. So that's around 45 people. Um, and the majority of those um, actually sit within our education directorate. And just to say that that is an increase of around 11 people um, since our last sort of uh, reporting period. 22% um, have got Welsh language speaking skills. And then we've got 52 to 55% with no Welsh ability at all. So that, that no ability includes um, speaking, writing, reading and also understanding Welsh. And then between 27 to 30 percent of staff um, have not sort of um, provided the information in terms of their Welsh language ability. So just a point to say that we are continually kind of running um, communication campaigns which look to encourage staff to provide the data so that we can obtain the most accurate picture of our Welsh language skills across the workforce. Um, and that also includes sort of wider equality data as well. So moving on then, um, sort of enabling change, I want to call this in our investigation approach. So it's probably just worth just giving a little bit of background. So um, the Welsh Language Commissioners um, wrote to us back in 2021 um, to inform us that there were some suspected breaches um, following an independent verification um, checks of our Welsh language telephone service via our contact centre. Um, so as an organisation, uh, we immediately accepted and recognised that changes were needed um, in order to ensure that we could provide a better Welsh language service for our stakeholders. Um, so when we received our determination notice, um, we began work to consider, you know, how could we develop um, a whole system kind of organisation wide approach um, in terms of making key improve improvements to areas such as assessing the language skills of staff, um, our recruitment and selection processes, so um, things like assessing the language needs of posts, which I know have been discussed today, how we advertise our jobs, um, so making them as, tr as attractive as possible to those with Welsh language ability, um, and how we, you know, provide, promote and encourage staff, um, particularly staff in customer facing roles. Um, and within our organisation with no or little, you know, moderate ability um, to undertake Welsh language training over the short term, but also to think about, you know, over the long, longer term as well. Um, so I'll just move on to the next slide. So in terms of our investigation approach, um, I think first off it goes without saying that key to everything is that 
um, and all the work that we're looking to take forward is that it has to have a customer focused approach um, and making sure that our customers um, and those that wish to use our Welsh language services are central to how we make take forward any sort of improvements um, through the implementation of our investigation action plan. So the first step um, which was is really key was gaining that corporate by um, leadership buy-in. Um, so raising the profile um, of the Welsh language and its importance has been a journey for us. Um, but it, it is it is um, it is getting there. And over the last couple of years, we've seen improvements, and it, it has been um, you know included within our corporate plan as one of the underpinning key priorities. Um, so recognising, I suppose, that as an organisation, um, we need to take these active steps um, to ensure that we're strengthening the ownership and accountability for meeting our Welsh language requirements um, via our corporate and political leadership teams, which is an important step. So I suppose the first um, Following this, then, after we'd obtained our corporate leadership buy-in, um, there was an agreement for an organisation-wide corporate Welsh network to be set up. So this core officer group, um, which is currently chaired by the head of Democratic Services, Governance and Partnerships, um, actually includes representation from other key areas um, across the organisation, such as human resources, um, key customer um, customer services teams, so like a contact centre, adults and children services, families information services, council tax, um, as well as communications, and also our strategic transformation team, um, who again have got another key role to play because they are supporting the organisation around the digital transformation programme but also they're bringing in new approaches to work in, such as agile project management and, you know, user research and how that can help um, us design better services. Um, so this, um, the core officer group then, or the, the corporate Welsh network, um, is currently responsible for develop, was de responsible, sorry, for developing um, the investigation action plan, and they're now responsible for implementing that plan as well um, and it was agreed for quarterly progress monitoring reports to be provided um, regarding our progress or any exceptions um, to go up through to our corporate leadership teams as well as ensuring that it's included within our forward work programmes um, through our scrutiny committees and things. Um, so the group, you know, they set to work on the action plan um, you know, making sure that the actions were tangible, clear timeframes and action leaves. But I think another key thing that we did was ensure that each of those actions were assigned, you know, to an appropriate member of our corporate leadership team as an accountable owner. Um, and then we looked to submit um, our plan, which was approved in spring. And I'll talk to you a little bit later on about some of the work that we've been doing together shortly. Um, and we'll continue to take forward now up until March um, 2024. Also, another key aspect is um, with the support of Mentor ICE, um, we've re-established our Blind and Gwent Network, Welsh Network. Um, so that's a partnership group, um, which is what I would say is like a, acting like a community of practice, which is really helping us um, in delivering and monitoring um, the implementation of things like our promotion strategy. And we recognise that within that, we've got like the key objective around, you know, increasing opportunities for people to be able to use Welsh in the workplace, for example. So um, we can see there's de a definite synergy and crossover with the work there and what we're trying to achieve in terms of addressing some of the areas we need to improve. Um, another key aspect is the group will be vital in helping us to identify, you know, the lived experiences and also the customer voices of those who prefer um, to receive our services in Welsh. And we'll be looking to feed that through and build that in as we go forward. And just quickly to mention, they've also, it's a little bit small on the slides, but um, CLT, our corporate leadership team, has also agreed 
to set up um, corporate policy and performance workshops, um, looking to hold them quarterly. And again, that's just another organisation wide platform um, or channel that we'll be looking to use again to sort of raise the profile of the Welsh language um, and make sure that, you know, we can, you know, proactively take things that we need to take forward through the investigation, out of the investigation. So whether that's like communicating updates, promoting the work that we're doing, ensuring that um, we're, we're heading into the right direction, I suppose. We'll just move on to the next slide. I suppose for us, um, it is about joining up the dots um, and thinking about, you know, bringing everything together in order to make these the improvements that we need to make, particularly to our Welsh language telephone services um, and our Welsh language services in general. So it is about a whole systems approach. Um, so we are looking at things like um, assessing service areas, um, existing Welsh language skills, um, supporting recruiting managers to recognise the importance and the value of bringing in new recruits with these skills um, so that not that we can just meet the standards, but so that we're developing and delivering sorry, a better service. Um, we will be reviewing our recruitment and selection processes um, so we make our job opportunities more attractive and more clearer in terms of what we're looking for um, and framing it um, in line with the with the guidelines we receive from the Commissioner's Office and today's session, but an almost like a, a can-do kind of assessment because we really don't want to lose candidates who are um, you know, more than capable of fulfilling the roles that we advertise. Um, however, anecdotally, we do hear, have a lot, of, receive a lot of feedback in um, sort of officers, Welsh networks that, um, you know, essential Welsh can be perceived as being off put in. And that, that's even for those who are fluent in the Welsh language. So we're looking into how we can um, address some of those things and, you know, make sure again that we, we're maximizing the opportunity to bring the skills into the organization is what i would say um we're also looking at training we promoting training so you know this the disky um and a gwaith um but we're also delivering specialists sort of tutor-led um training uh sessions for customer facing staff we've had some really good feedback um from the courses that we're currently running um, with our customers um, contact staff, you know, so, some of the members, they, they've they got no sort of Welsh language ability in it. They're really starting to enjoy things. They're really starting to understand the importance here and why it matters. So it's, it's been really encouraging um, to see that and not just putting, um, making these formal sort of training arrangements um, available. We are trying to encourage those that are learning um, to use Welsh as often as they possibly can in their day to day, you know, in informal settings as well. Um, so, you know, we, we're also reviewing um, all of our sort of Welsh language processes and procedures. So thinking about, you know, our customer front door, you know, even reviewing our um, automated messaging and telephone options so that what we want is an end to end good service. Um, for those who prefer to use uh, Welsh language. So whether that's, you know, automated messages to speak into having that first contact with someone in the contact centre and then for that contact centre to be upskilled. And then if there are any opportunities within, you know, in the future within that contact centre that we are attracting the right people into those roles with Welsh language ability. That's wrong. So positive steps then, small and big. So we do recognise that there's much work to be done. And at times, to be honest, that we can feel like there is a bit of a mountain to climb, um, given our position as a small local authority, low populations of Welsh language speakers, and obviously a significant portion of our workforce um, with no language, Welsh language ability as well. 
Um, but we are maintaining this positive approach um, and celebrating even the smallest wins as well as the biggest steps towards change. Um, I think it's an important point that to say that, you know, I, I believe that accumulative action can be powerful. Um, and obviously, I'd just like to thank, you know, the, the Commissioner's support around these areas, as well as our regional counterparts and partners in helping us um, through our networks to be able to share all the learning, the tools and the resources that are available to us so that we, you know, we can take things forward more effectively and, and at a greater pace. I think as well, it is about winning hearts and minds. Um, understanding the importance that as an organisation we do need to meet the Welsh language standards but also the importance of why we need to do that and why why it will benefit those that speak Welsh um, and not just for our customers now but also for younger um, and future generations um, who will be coming to us with Welsh language ability and choosing to use it I suppose. I suppose that links back um, to what we were saying earlier about you know, making sure that the customer is central um, to all of this work. You know, lived experience is important and that is used to shape how we take things forward, but also listened by our corporate leadership teams um, and members as well. So, um, yeah, so on reflection, I would say that um, it's, it is about, you know, as the corporate centre, so the corporate policy team, um, we've got a role to play as well. So, you know, supporting this work, acting as enablers and blocking any sticky issues that we come across. And then it's just, you know, being that place, uh, you know, the listener, you know, if, if service areas got any concerns or fears um, that we can just, you know, keep supporting them, keep encouraging them, keep reassuring them, I suppose. And we act as that single point of contact but still empowering them um, to take ownership for this themselves. So just I think this I believe this is my last slide so just to touch on a few of the areas um, that we've sort of um, got in progress and achieved over the first quarter. Um, so we are we have and we still continue to deliver the Welsh language training program for our customer service teams. Um, we have set up a Welsh language community of practice um, within the customer service unit. Um, that's including the Teams channel. So that again is, is about encouraging people in those formal and informal settings to use Welsh. Um, we are revising our corporate induction process of being proactive around, you know, um, ensuring that when people come into the organisation, they're aware of the training opportunities that's available, the Welsh language standards. And then we are looking to utilise use of um, Welsh language recruitment platforms as well when we advertise our, our posts. And again, thinking about how we make certain posts essential. And then just finally to say there is an ongoing telephony project where we're currently looking at how we can improve our automated messaging um, using agile project management tools. So it's a bit of a whistle stop tour there, but um, do you all thank you very much for listening today. 